Tick tock, homies. I just saw a movie about a giant evil clock. So I think you all know what time it is. Let's get started. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba -ba. Hello, my friends. Welcome to Thumb Together. My name is Andrew Fantasia, and today we're going to be talking about the house with a clock in its walls together. Thanks so much for tuning in. As always, if you enjoy this video, please feel free to give it a thumbs up and give some love to that subscribe button as well. Otherwise, the evil warlocks will get me. And we don't want that. I gotta start this review off by quickly mentioning the book. All right, this is a book that was written back in the early 70s by a guy named John Belairs. And it's a kid's book with some horror and some mystery and some magic and all kinds of cool, creepy stuff. And I remember checking it out of my school library and reading it when I was in grade one. So that would have been over 20 years ago, closer to 25 years ago. And the book stuck with me even up till now. I found the actual cover that I remember too, because, you know, with books, there's always multiple covers and different pictures and whatnot. But this is the one I remember with the big face and the clock. And obviously the whole plot wasn't still fresh in my memory. I didn't really remember what the clock was or where it was or what was going on. There were just little snippets from this book that somehow survived in my brainstem for close to 25 years. And I think it's just a testament to John Belair's because he painted such a cool picture. The two things that namely stuck out to me were A, I remembered that there was a character named Mrs. Zimmerman who was always making chocolate chip cookies. And B, what stuck with me the most was the whole atmosphere of this little boy who has to go stay with his eccentric uncle and that eccentric uncle happens to live in a very big creepy old-timey mansion the boy spends several nights you know outside of his daily routine he's not going to bed early and getting up to go to school and whatnot he, he's staying up super late in this mansion and just exploring all its dark mysterious corners and his uncle's always sitting in his study, smoking a pipe and looking at old books. And Mrs. Zimmerman kind of wanders around and just appears out of nowhere and carrying a tray of cookies. And there's just this eeriness to it, but this absolute addictive mystery to the house. Like, I remember wanting to explore every single square inch of that house while I was reading that book. And the key word in all that babble I just did was the word atmosphere. The book contained atmosphere coming out the ass. The House with a Clock in Its Walls, adapted into a movie, might have been a catastrophe, but thankfully, it was pretty good. One of the main reasons why it was so good was it maintained that atmosphere. And so that brings us to the movie itself. What's it about? What's the deal here? Well, Lewis is a little boy growing up in the mid-50s, and his parents die in a car crash, so he is sent to live with his Uncle Jonathan. Uncle Jonathan lives in a very big old school mansion that I want for myself one day because I love really old houses like this. And uh, there's a lot of weird stuff going on. His Uncle Jonathan's best friend, Mrs. Zimmerman, who lives next door, is always hanging around in the house. And the two of them are always disappearing and reappearing and weird stuff happens. And the reason for all this weird shit going down is because Uncle Jonathan happens to be a warlock and Mrs. Zimmerman happens to be a witch. And the house that Jonathan lives in was once owned by another warlock named Isaac, who was not a very nice person. And Isaac left a big evil clock somewhere inside the house with plans to use the clock for some nefarious shit. And that's our story. Now, if you saw the Goosebumps movie a couple years back, which also starred Jack Black and was also a kid-friendly horror, you're probably expecting something like that. Especially because there's also a Goosebumps 2 coming out next month. Jack Black's a busy man. But while Goosebumps was very kitschy and kiddy and felt kind of shallow and cheap, this doesn't feel like that. Yes, this is a kid's horror movie, but it's the kind of kid's horror movie, and this is very important, that treats the kids like adults. When we were little, we had movies like Monster Squad, or Hocus Pocus that had real stakes and like some big bad stuff going down, but they were kids horror movies. A House with a Clock in His Walls is exactly like those kind of movies. Yes, it's PG to the extreme, you know, you're not gonna see, I was just about to say you're not gonna see blood, but actually you see some blood in this. 
but you you know what I mean. This isn't the kind of horror movie where somebody is sawing off an arm and then Jason comes out of the woods with a machete and just cuts somebody's face in half. This isn't that kind of horror movie. Nor is it the kind of horror movie where, you know, the nun is going to appear from behind a curtain and just scare the living bejesus out of you. This is the kind of horror movie where warlocks cast spells and creepy things pop out of creepy dark places and, like, somebody will turn a jack-in-the-box and then nothing will come out of the jack-in-the-box but the actual jack is behind the person using the jack-in-the-box and he's like an evil puppet and he starts chasing them. This is that kind of movie. But it doesn't feel shallow and it doesn't feel cheap. It is just soaked in atmosphere. And again, I'm using that word atmosphere. I'm talking the old Victorian mansions with the creepy stairs and the old clocks and just everything looks dusty and mysterious. And then there's a graveyard in the movie that's just cloaked in fog. But it's not like real graveyards. It's like legit romanticized graveyards where there's friggin' statues of Grim Reapers everywhere that are like 25 feet tall. Like, this is the epitome of romanticized horror. And it drips with it. It absolutely drips with it. Now, you'd be hard-pressed to find two actors in Hollywood that are more well-liked than Jack Black and Kate Blanchett. I mean, everybody likes Jack Black and Kate Blanchett. They're just... They're great people, they're so cool, and they're they're talented, they're fun to watch. And in this movie, in a movie like this, again, your first perception would be like, oh man, they're going to phone it in, they're just going to be saying stupid poop jokes and whatever because it's for kids. And that's not the case. Granted, the humor in this movie is very PG humor. Absolutely. Like, you're not going to... If you're an adult with an adult sense of humor, you're not going to laugh your ass off at the house with a clock in its walls. But these two actors... They bring their A-game. They're not just dicking around because, oh, it's a kid's movie. I can just kind of phone this in and collect my paycheck. No, that's not what's happening here. You can tell that they're both having a good time and they're both giving genuine performances. I mean, Kate Blanchett does not phone anything in. She doesn't. I mean, there is a sequence in The House with a Clock on Its Walls where Kate Blanchett uses the magic scepter that's inside her umbrella, wielding it like a machine gun, to shoot bursts of magical purple energy at a bunch of evil jack-o'-lanterns that are attacking her. And she plays the whole thing straight like she's in the middle of a freaking war. That's just a testament to how good this woman is. Not many actors can do that with a straight face, but she does it. There are three separate instances in this film where Kate Blanchett had a scene that almost made me cry. And if you're wondering what the hell could possibly make a grown man cry almost three times, in a movie called The House with a Clock in Its Walls. There's not going to be any spoilers here, but I'll just say this. Her character's last name is Zimmerman, and this movie takes place in the 1950s. Do the unfortunate math. Now, like I said earlier, one of the two things that stuck with me about this book was that Mrs. Zimmerman was always making chocolate chip cookies. And I remember after I read the book, I was like, I want chocolate chip cookies right now. And I was a kid, so I always wanted chocolate chip cookies. But now, seeing the movie, again, I want chocolate chip cookies, baby. I mean, the way they make the cookies look in this movie, they look so effing good. And she puts, like, pecans in them, too. So you've got, like, these ginormous chips and then ginormous pecans next to it. And I'm just like, oh, baby, take me now. Because it's in the 50s, there's also a scene where they go to a malt shop and the kid gets an Ovaltine milkshake. And I was just like, oh man, I really want an Ovaltine shake. Do they still make Ovaltine? Man, I'm old. I'm old. You guys probably don't even know what I'm talking about. But Ovaltine milkshakes were pretty damn tasty and now I want one. Now if you're a person like me who loves world building and who loves the details, it's all about the details, you're really going to like the house with the clock in its walls. I mean, there are so many moments where Jack Black's character or Kate Blanchett's character will be, they'll be in a discussion with each other. And, you know, the boy who we're, we're seeing everything through the eyes of this boy, he's just kind of listening through a crack in the door and he can hear what they're saying. Maybe he kind of peeks in and you can see the two of them pacing through like this library and, and arguing about something. And Jack will be holding a book and he'll be like, well, I studied, you know, the runes of Antioch and they said this, this and that. And Kate Blanchett will be like, well, yeah, but, but the Magi of the Voldrani said this in the, the Undead Scrolls of Azeroth. And I'm just like, wow, I want to know, like, what are the Undead Scrolls of Azeroth? What is this? What is that? Who, who wrote these runes and why? This world of magic is deep and it's dark 
in places. Like there is, like I said, the blood gets spilled. There's some necromancy going on. You might even meet a demon at some point in the movie. And they don't sugarcoat it when you see it. It's a legitimately scary effing demon. If you're looking for a good movie to put you in the Halloween mood, I can't recommend this enough. Yeah, it's kid-friendly. It's not going to go down in history as one of the great horrors. But if you're 7 to 14 years old, you'll get a major kick out of it. And if you're an adult who remembers movies like Hocus Pocus and Monster Squad and looks back on those kind of movies fondly, you're going to have a lot of fun with this. This is going to bring back some really cool memories. Even though it's a little early for Halloween, it's definitely a good way to kick off the Halloween season. I kind of want to see it again already. So that is the house with a clock and its walls. And it lives up to the 20 plus years of book memories that I still got rattling around up here. Thank you so much for watching this review. My name is Andrew Fantasia. I will see you here next time. And until then, adios.